So the inspiration behind Chain Stories is when I started working with dancers in the black country. I myself, I'm not from the black country, but my husband is. And um, we're talking about the dialect and the history of the black country kind of dying out. And there's so many talented people within the black country. So I decided to create Emmy Dance Company, um, the first you know, professional dance company based in Stourbridge, but now West Bromwich. And I thought there's so many talented people here. Why not let them do a site specific project that engages the community, but also gives them the opportunity to perform around the region. So in February or March 2020, we went to the opening uh, pre-launch event for the Commonwealth Games for Birmingham 2022. Uh, and uh, Marcy and I were listening to what they wanted and thinking about the projects that Marcy already had in mind. And uh, one of those was something that explored like the history of the black country, um, because there's a lot of untold stories and unappreciated history in that area. Um, and at the end of that, we spoke to Ray Dean Carter uh, and she said, yes, get in touch. That sounds like the kind of thing we'd be interested in potentially supporting. Um, now then, obviously, in March, we went, um, March 2020, we went into lockdown because of COVID. And um, so then through some online meetings and discussions that Marcia and I had with the Commonwealth Games cultural team, um, Mercy, Judith Palmer, uh, Gail and Ian from Ace Dance and Music, Louise Cataraga and Jennifer Jean Charles, um, we kind of came up with the idea of exploring um, the black country's history as the center of chain making, um, but also in a wider context, it's connections with Commonwealth countries. So in particular, we worked with Ghana and Grenada. Uh, so Grenada, because Marcia is Grenadian, and um, so that's her heritage. And so she wanted to use that as part of the story. And uh, Ghana um, as a West African country, which is obviously where a lot of slaves were taken from. Uh, so the story um, looks at the struggle of a, these individual groups of people, so the uh, chain makers and their fight for fair pay for women uh, in the early 1900s, um, the, and the chains that they made, and the chains were then uh, transported along the canals across the sea uh, to Ghana, and then across the ocean again to Grenada, and it also looks at um, that uh, those people then coming over, obviously years later, as part of the Windrush generation, and then to celebrate modern day multicultural Britain and all that that has brought to us.
We were talking to Celia and Nitete for quite a large period of time, but in November 2021, uh, we were told that we got um, the commission that we'd applied for from the British Council through the Commonwealth Games Cultural Committee. And then from there, uh, we made an Arts Council application uh, to support the UK aspects, uh, the UK artists, um, as well as the international artists. And it was particularly important for us to bring over the international artists because um, there's a lot of things that can get lost uh, when you're working online. And it's really, it's great to just be working with people where you can understand their movement in 3D and in the full like context of, of a space. I think you get a lot more from it. So from November 2021, mostly there was a lot of organising, a lot of back and forth and trying to sort out visas and uh, flights and making sure that everybody um, was provided for and they had places to stay. Um, and that was particularly difficult because of course it's the Commonwealth Games, which whilst that's why we've got the commission, it also means that a lot of places were booked up and flights were more expensive. Uh, and also the, um, the other aspect, which is mostly Marcia's um, kind of realm, but the artistic and creative idea, making sure that the things, the stories that we want to tell are connected and we can do that in a way that the audience can understand and can relate to, even though they're stories that they potentially haven't heard before or they're aspects of their history they don't know anything about. So um, going back to my mother and father who were born in the Caribbean, um, we're from Grenada, it's my origin. Um, so my dad was in the arm, armed forces and my mum was a nurse. And I wanted to kind of tell a story of their journey and how the chains, you know, connected to Commonwealth countries such as Grenada and Ghana. So it's about them, it's about their history, their journey, but also how it's done kind of a full circle. Um, and it's about a celebration also with the youth of today and also the last, the, the generation that came before us. This project brings not only international dancers together, but artists from, you know, the region. And it's something new, and I think it's something vibrant, which will encourage everybody to kind of, A, get it back outside, and B, to kind of not be closed off to any ideas of collaborating with people who are, are across the sea. I am Cecilia Griffith, the Artistic Director, owner of Conception Dance Theatre from the Spice Island, Grenada. I got involved in this project through a conversation and invitation by Marcia Edwards of Emmy Dance Company. Um, we started with a online collaboration between Marcia, <laughs> with Emmy Dancers Conception and Noyam Dance Institute from Ghana. It was a virtual project called Oceans of Independence. My name is Ni Tete Yate. I'm the director of the Noyam African Dance um, Institute in Ghana. Um, I remember about well, two years back, um, I was on the University of Ghana campus and I had a call, a WhatsApp call. Um, I picked and a lady on the other line said her name was Marcia well, from the UK and um, from me, Dance UK, and was interested in doing a collaboration, all right? So I'd like to explain what the, you know, what the collaboration was and what the vision was. And the more she spoke about it, the more I identified with how I envisage, you know, um, a collaborative production happening. And I got really excited when I heard um, Grenada was going to be part of us doing this collaboration because it opens up the possibilities, you know, it, it, it opens up the possible ways of working and connecting um, with each other. Because of course you have Ghana, you have the UK, you have Grenada, um, you have Grenada, you have three cultures that interweave. Because if you take the connection between Ghana all the way through the um, 
through the islands. You had the slaves coming in from, from the West African coast. Um, they went through the Caribbeans. They influenced how things happened here. And, um, and then the United Kingdom came back to Africa. So you had that um, to and fro of culture, of ideas, of goods, of services, and what have you. You know, so that really got me excited about, about this project. And here we are today. We decided to do a couple of pop-ups around the region. We were commissioned by Canal and River Trust to kind of try out these uh, stories before we got to the large scale projects at the Bumble Hole. So um, we kind of, the pro dancers and the youth graduate dancers kind of came together and we wanted to go to areas that didn't really necessarily have the arts brought to them. So it was something new and exciting for us. We decided to do um, a particular site, which everyone knows, Spaghetti Junction, um, which is an unusual site, but no dance has ever been done underneath the motorway before. So of course, every dance are gonna try it. <laughs> so yeah, we had a great time and we were able to work with other community groups uh, and schools as well, such as Windsor High School. Um, we worked with Ace Youth as well, obviously uh, Gail, Ian and Iona. We went to them um, initially in the beginning as well to see how they could also be involved in the project. Um, they were really excited, so we had them do one of the sites at Smethwick Locks and also we worked with Eloquent Praise. Um, again, we worked with them for the large scale project, which was great. I mean, initially Fleur sent me a whole load of um, films of the, of the dances, so you just get a flavour of what people were doing. Um, and then we kind of came together with the kind of British musicians. Uh, they'd already done some work on pulling some of the initial tracks together but it was very organic, because sometimes when you play as a musician, you're given charts and say, play this, but that wasn't this one. It was much more, these are the ideas, these are the feel that we want, um, and then you sort of develop together. And then all the, uh, uh, the other musicians came in who were from all over the world, and that was even more fascinating, because then, uh, while I think you know music is a universal language, we all speak it slightly differently. So it was it was quite interesting getting used to the stuff that they did. And it's funny because I think I was saying earlier. I mean, I'm a jazz musician, so I'm quite used to quite elaborate rhythms and stuff. But they were doing stuff that I was like, "What is that?" <laughs> and so getting used to what they were doing, but they were doing it very sort of naturally and organically. So that was just a fascinating process. Uh, and, fun, and as it coalesced and came together, it was amazing. Hello everyone, my name is Namaya Smith, call me Nini Taps. Um, I'm a musician and a dancer. Um, I play the drums and this is how I got involved in the Chain Stories project. Um, I met Fleur and Marcia um, in 2022 and they told me about a project, what they were looking to do. Um, and I said to myself, okay, this is, this is a project that sounds really good that I'll be getting involved in because I'll be playing the drums, which is something that I was looking to get back into. And the project um, really sounded good. And then we got to the rehearsal aspect of the project. And yeah, I was really blown away, to be honest with you. And working with dancers from Grenada and um, Ghana um, not just dancers, but um, musicians as well. The, they had a few drummers as well, which for me was very exciting because I got to see and understand of how these guys move and work, and especially with how they, with their music as well. It involves a collaboration of um, different companies. So my company from Grenada, the Conception Dance Theatre, we are bringing our Grenadian folk heritage as well as our experiencing contemporary and modern dance to the UK, as well as we are involved in learning from the company from Ghana and also from the company from England. So it's a collaborative effort of all the companies. It's been very interesting. Um, and the way I see um, this process, it's given 
and I'm speaking from a Ghanaian point of view, given me as an artist and you know, my fellow uh, uh, members of the Noya African Dance Institute, the opportunity to work in ways that we hadn't previously done. And knowing that we started this um, collaboration during the COVID time, it means we had to hop on, um, on Zoom, trying to get, you know, us do um, class and workshops, you know, with, with, with UK and Grenada, having Grenada UK also do that with us. And even doing our first test performance online, that presented a challenge that, you know, we had never anticipated pre-COVID, pre because now we're performing through the internet. And one thing that um, really jumped out at me was how technology would limit or extend what you can do, the challenges it presents, and how to find creative ways of, of, of going around it, and also the possibility of reaching a wider um, audience through that, through that medium, yeah. So initially, Marcia had the framework or the concept for the piece, and we had a number of online discussions and sharings about the piece. I must say I was totally like lost. <laughs> but um, reading up, doing my research about Mary MacArthur. And then when I got here and we had another meeting and I think it, that's when it really started to click. And then I started to do even more readings about, you know, the black country and the chain makers. And um, I think Marcia Nitete and I have a good synergy. We're able to discuss openly and freely, you know, and challenge each other. And I think just being in the space, I think has allowed me to to like really understand the scope of the project. So I think um, just the way we interact with each other has allowed us to, to merge our ideas. I think there is a lot of individuality, but there's still a lot of integration. And I think that individuality is important in a multicultural society. You know, everybody does their own little thing, but then we can all come together and, you know, and still express common ideas. This process has had, I would say, three stages. The first initial stage um, was a small uh, piece of funding from the Arts Council to research the initial idea, and we did that with just ME, and we did a sharing at the Arena Theatre in December 2020. And then from there, there was a piece, a small part of funding from the British Council that allowed us to work uh, with Conception and Noyam remotely and investigate our ideas and our shared history and just to begin to share our practices. And then from there, um, which has now led us to here, where we are now, where we're all together in the UK um, and continuing to share our practice. And that's funded by the British Council, the Arts Council England, Canal and River Trust, Black Country Touring, and we've got support from New Hampton Arts Centre. Cross-cultural exchanges such as this one are important because it allows us to interact with people from different cultures in a more profound way. Um, a lot of times we learn about other cultures by reading or watching documentaries, etc. But actually being in the same space as with the different groups allows us to learn so much more. And I remember specifically the first workshop with Noyam and Nitete was explaining about the different types of dances and categories and the reasons why they do certain things. And I had that aha moment because most of the information I had on West African dance, it was from the textbooks. But to hear him explain it in his, from his context, you know, it just brought a lot of clarity to me. It's important artistically because we learn from each other. Being Grenadian, some of my roots are from West Africa. So we can get the, that material, which I can use, or we can use in our choreography, in our experiences. And we can also learn from them as they can learn from us. And as, as a choreographer myself, it gives me more material that I can work with. And also 
helps in the networking and also allow us to learn from the people in the diaspora, which is very important for us as artists. So originally, uh, I started choreographing on my dancers, uh, just small, short stories. So I looked at people like Mary MacArthur, who fought for women's rights, the right to vote, and for fair pay. Um, I also looked at the idle women, um, the miners of the black country, um, because these, these are the people who worked the land, they worked the land, they made the chains, and even the chain makers who didn't even know that they were making chains for the slave industry. The first one will be the first online performance um, we did. Because what happens is that we spend months, you know, working, um, so would exchange material, would have, you know, um, an online meeting with everybody, would go through the material, would manipulate the material, Noyam would do its bit, UK would do its bit, Grenada would do its bit, we'll come back together, put everything together. But the real test is always when you present what you have to, you know, to the general public and how, um, how that final work takes form. And then it also informs which direction you can or cannot go uh, moving forward. So that has been one of the highlights. The second one, which of course they're all equally important, but has been the ability to reach and connect with um, artists that, you know, <laughs> uh, pre this, uh, this collaboration, we wouldn't have been, you know, collaborating or, you know, working with. But just the opportunity to meet other artists and work together. It's very interesting because when we heard from the first presentation from Ghana, there are so many similarities as it relates to us from Grenada in terms of our cultural form. So it really strikes, you know, strikes something very dear to us that we have found some of our main roots and that is important. By interacting with people from different cultures in this setting, we learn to appreciate the differences more and we can identify how much more similar we are together whether it is the way we speak, the way we express ourselves, the way we move, you know, there's a deeper connection. And I think um, this opportunity would allow us to appreciate more about the others, as well as to also learn to appreciate our culture and have a greater sense of identity because we tend to want to showcase more of who we are, you know, because it's not a competition, it's a shared space, but we also want to share who we are as a people too. So I think it's, it's, it will allow us as a group, as, an, as a team and as individuals to, to be more proud of our culture as well. I think it was, it was sort of an iterative process, so it did take some time to pull together. Um, and one of the most interesting things was uh, working with dancers, which I've never done before. And a, a bit like the other musicians, they almost speak a different language. It's similar, but slightly different. Um, so they'd often have cues that were dance cues. So we were really fortunate in that we had uh, the drummer, Nino, was um, kind of a dancer as well. So he got the cues. So it was really interesting. So we'd be sitting there going, how does this work? And you'd look at Nino and you'd go, this is what it means. And we'd kind of then work that together. So yeah, so, but like anything, you know, it's the communication you have that builds the trust and builds the strength of the piece. And that just takes a bit of time, but when it comes together, it's amazing. I got to understand more of how I could work with dancers. Me being a dancer myself in the lines of hip hop, um, which is one of my main things that I like to do when I'm playing. I like to play with, play two dancers, sorry. And to play, and to play two dancers who are from a completely different continent than I am, and it was, it was next level. I had to learn different. I had to learn different drum rhythms, which I never played before, and I, I had to really adapt myself. Um, once I understood that, I had to adapt myself like that, like almost straight away. I'm like, uh, I had to look, kind of really learn all these rhythms like very fast. Um, the good thing about it, really, like. Uh, Ni Tete, he was a very big help. Eddie as well, he was uh, one of the drummers for 
for the Ghanaian dancers, the no from Noyam Dance. They really helped me with trying to get these rhythms, get them down and being really in time with the dancers. And I got to understand that a lot more when I was watching the ballet. It was really mind blowing to see how they all collaborated and worked together. So I've got to go back home and learn all these new rhythms because I know for a simple, I know for a fact it's going to help me in the future, and it did with this project for sure. Um, Chain Stories as a project, it's really exciting because obviously we get to work with different people from different countries, but it's also. Um, diving into our roots as like um, our culture so it's based in the black country and it's about um, how chains were made um, you know back in the day um, and the naivety of what people were doing um, because they didn't know that they were actually making chains for the slave trade so it's actually really interesting to learn about that um, and to actually portray that through a dance and other art mediums um, to an audience because I don't think a lot of people actually know about that. Just by us coming together to do this, you know what, even forget the final performance we're doing. The process for my artists as I'm seeing them, they're having um, uh, workshops, they're learning and how they are growing as artists within themselves and then the residual effects where when we go back home we're going to work with other artists in Ghana they are also going to learn from what we have learned um, from here also the quality of our work also improves by having working with other artists because we're learning new ways of executing movements new ways of seeing things work on stage new ways of putting different vocabulary and music and rhythm and things together we're learning that we're going back home to Ghana we're going to interact with other Ghanaian artists we're going to have that opportunity to share so that collectively, we are growing. Collectively, we are developing. important this collaboration because they are in the diaspora. We from Grenada and we have family living in the UK and we can really bring that information to them because on other occasions they wouldn't have been able to get it. So us being here really allows us to share okay that rich cultural heritage with them which normally they wouldn't have had the opportunity to. So I think it's very important. These kinds of collaboration, these kinds of festival, it brings us together as one, as artists to really share what we have, learn from each other and also to send, sell it or send it across to the diaspora that, okay, we have things that we can work on. I think it's really important for projects like this to take place because um, without us all coming together, then we would be operating as, as artists in isolation. And I think when artists come together and we share our practices, we can all grow and learn so much more. And like when you're an artist, it's a continuous learning development. There's never something you don't know. There's always a way that someone can explain or share something that gives you a new perspective. And I also think it's particularly important to understand um, the history of the Commonwealth in a broader sense and um, the effects that that had. So this project talks about um, the struggles that the people in the black country had, the miners, um, women's rights for fight for fair pay, um, the slave trade, emancipation, and then the struggles, but also the joys that the Windrush generation had coming into the UK and how that's led us to modern day multicultural Britain. And I think that sometimes people talk about these um, things in isolation, but actually they all kind of come from the industrial revolution and the push for cheap labor and like mass production of things. And that took 
people away from their ways of living. I think it's important to have that kind of multimedia and multicultural stuff. I mean, for a multitude of reasons. I mean, partly because uh, if you look at this tale of the the women in the, who made the chains, it was multicultural. It was. It was. Um, and also, if you look at the time, if you look at the times, even though it, with music, one of the things that they did, I've read recently is that they did sing. So one of the things that they, people would do when they were had either finished or during the actual chain making process is you'd sing because you couldn't talk to people because you, the machines were such that you often couldn't do that. So people used to sing. So it, it's kind of following that tradition, you know. And you know, if you actually look at the history of what the chains were used for and how they made. That's why it's important because the tale is not just like any tale. It's not just set within the black country. It has ramifications wider. And I think that's where I think the piece was very successful. Um, especially now for the Commonwealth Games, I think that it's come at the right time for us, not only to celebrate the West Midlands, but also to celebrate the artists, you know, the musicians, the dancers, the actors, you know, that's something that we've all tried to involve in this project. So, you know, we can thrive. And I mean, we've got a drummer um, who is now collaborating with Ghana and, you know, he's got the opportunity to continue that even after this project. So it's not about making the work and just finishing, ending, it's about a process and um, a legacy that we're trying to leave behind. Um, I think as an artistic director, choreographer, um, for me it was a sense of belonging and, uh, you know, confidence, you know, confidence, we always think of oh, be confident, be confident, but we are confident in different areas of our lives. And this is the biggest project that I've ever participated in, in terms of the scale, and I think um, I just had to keep speaking to myself about, you know, being true to my work, being true to my process. And um, I think that's one of the biggest challenges I've had. And, you know, to have open conversation because sometimes I don't like to offend people. So I tend to be quiet, but I also have to recognize that if I want to share creatively too, I would also need to speak up a bit more so that at the end of the day, there's no regrets and I'll be happy with what we've accomplished together. important to share the knowledge and the history of stories. Um, I mean, for instance, working with Nitete, we've worked together before on a project last year called Oceans of Independence. And it's the first time we've been, we've done an online collaboration. It was with three countries, you know, at the same time. So we had Grenada as well as ourselves. But this time, you know, we felt like we needed them in the studio to learn more from them. They have so many stories to tell. Um, and for them, it's all about their ancestors and how we all connect together. We've got so much in common, you know, from our childhood through to, you know, our, our great grandmas um, and granddads. So, by telling those stories, we are, are just becoming more knowledgeable. Um, so 
in doing that as well and working together with people like Canel and River Trust and Black Country Touring. Um, you know, Arts Councils have given us this opportunity to kind of not only research what those other countries went through as well as ourselves, but to kind of grasp the, the depth of the history and, and the journey that it took from beginning to end. Um, and then when you kind of look at that over a larger period of time, then you, they also continued to make change well into the 50s and 60s in the black country. So it's likely that chains were made that were used on the ships, such as the Windrush that brought people over from the Caribbean. Um, so over a really like large period of time, about two or 300 years, those chains that were made there kind of links, I suppose is the best word, the people of the black country to um, Africa and the Caribbean and then back again? Uh, for me, the real positives was pushing myself to try new styles of dance and to try to be more open, more dynamic as a dancer myself. And of course, working along with persons from different cultures and different societies and making new friends, of course. It's, it's inspired me quite a lot, actually. Like, it's made me a stronger person, like, in general, like... And just, like, the female empowerment of it all as well. Even in the past, like, when it wasn't necessarily as prevalent, it was just... It's just, like, good to, like, finally... Almost, like, bring their dream to life. Uh, yeah. And um, the dance aspect of it is also, like, incredible. Like, we get to perform to so many people who maybe haven't even seen dance like this before, and it's just... It's just really incredible. For me, this experience means getting an opportunity to travel, um, working alongside other colleagues, other dancers from other countries, and working under other choreogra choreographers and learning more techniques, more styles. My hopes for this project are obviously that it is successful and the audience love it when we're out there, everyone's together in unity because that's really what it's about, the unity of struggle and how things are shared even though we have different experiences. We also have shared experiences. Um, long term, I hope that it establishes the not just ME, but Noyam and Conception as, um, you know, artists that can work internationally with different um, styles and different people and bring them together. Um, yeah, and I hope it inspires people to be
in terms of the next stages, I'm excited to see everyone come together in those rehearsal spaces, those few days before the show where everyone is kind of running around, but we're all coming together and seeing it come to life and seeing the artistic directors, that smile, that look of happiness on their face of the dancers coming together. And for the day itself, as it's a new type of theater for me, as a new type of being in one space with the audience and literally there with them. So I'm excited for that. I suppose from my perspective, I mean, the, ch the challenges were kind of many, but a few. So, you know, trying to get people from that amount of different countries to come together in a fairly loose piece takes some doing. But the important thing is there was a will to do it, you know. And even though dancers and musicians might talk different languages at times, they would find the common language between them and there would be go-betweens who could make that happen. So, you know, even though as a piece, I don't know from the dancers' perspective, there was lots going on and lots of different dance groups. So yep. Go from lots going on from lots of different okay. groups. So there was lots going on and lots of different dance groups and lots of different personalities. I mean, to have a show of 50 odd, however many performers it was, you know, all of which have their own issues, takes some managing. And I admire the people, be, uh, how they pull that together. But as I said, there was a will to do it. And I think that's what made it work. It's, a, it's for me, it's a foundation which is ultimately growing. Um, and in any way that I can push the next generation forward into becoming or doing what they want to do um, is my aim. The first challenge was trying not to be a dancer. <laughs> um, really, me sitting there on the drums, I'm not gonna lie, it was difficult because I wanted to get myself involved with what everyone else was doing with the dancing because I learned a lot just by sitting there, just by watching them. Again, it was different dance styles. Um, there was contemporary involved. There was the traditional dances like the ballet. Uh, I thought to myself, wow, like I'm sitting on the drums and I'm not, be, I'm not able to get out there. And my second challenge, yeah, I had to really be in time um, with the Ghanaian dancers. And that really wasn't easy for me, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but again, Ni Tete, he, he helped me with that. If he wasn't there by my side being like the narrator for me, in a way, um, I think I would have struggled a lot, a lot more. So thanks to him, I got to um, overcome that, really. Um, did, I don't think I really had it. Oh, actually, my last challenge was working with the other musicians. Now, these guys, they were already seasoned musicians. They come from a completely different background in terms of music from what I do. And I really had to also adapt to them. So I had to really adapt to everything and everyone around me because I, I really felt completely new towards it. And with the other musicians, um, Andy, Mike and Rob, um, like I said, they come from the jazz um, background as well. Um, they, they helped me to be in time with other musicians, being able to play with other musicians from a completely different background and style than, than, than I am. See, I, I think we've only done step one of what the whole thing means to be. Step two, because step one brought us to the UK, it looks like the um, core of inspiration, because we are in this space, is birthed by where we are. I also see the second stage where there is the opportunity to move the team to Grenada. And then that environment would also lend itself to artistic stimuli that would use an extra nourishing this project. And then we do a Ghana phase, where physically all the artists are in Ghana. We're seeing the slave castles, we're seeing where, um, you know, uh, the traditional things that have influenced these various countries later on. And then the final stage is being able to put all these three Things because now you've put UK and Grenada in Ghana to experience. You've put Ghana and, uh, Ghana and UK um, also in Grenada to experience. So all of us have first had experience of what happens on the ground in that um, the natural habitat of the ideas we're talking about. 
And then of course, the final thing will be to do a bigger production at the end using this, uh, how do I say, culminative resources that we've been able to, to gather. Being a, being a black woman um, in the black country is something that, you know, I, I kind of wanted to represent my culture. And, you know, I'm obviously from Yorkshire, but I wanted to bring something, something different and say, you know, for people of Caribbean origin, African origin, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. You know, it's, there's no barrier. There should be no barrier, no, people shouldn't always just see color. It's not, it's not about that. It's, it's about how you present yourself, how you represent yourself, um, and also being open to collaboration, being open to those difficult situations where you don't want to kind of approach people because you don't want that. Um, you, you think that people have a perception of you, but yeah, they may, okay, they may have, but at the end of the day, you have to believe in yourself and what you want to achieve. So I think just go ahead and do it and don't be scared to do it because if you are scared, you will never know how far you can go. I, I kind of wanted to tell the story, not so much in a negative way, but almost a celebration as well of how we overcame that history. So it's about that next generation. It's about, you know, educating and kind of giving us a boost at the same time, you know, we want to, we want, we want the community, we want our community as well to be confident. So from my perspective, what I've taken away from it is that this is a kind of piece I'd like to be involved with again. It gave me much more of an understanding of dance as an art form, which I probably didn't as au fait with as other art forms but actually got me to get quite a deeper understanding of it. Uh, and also about how you can work with other artists as a musician. So that has really, um, that's been my main learning. And I suppose the other learning is just going deeper into the actual subject itself. You know, it's given me more of an understanding of the black country, which can't be a bad thing. Ah, it's really big. Um, again, I got to learn more, you know, I think that was one of my biggest things. I mean. I didn't get to dance. I mean, I sat on the drums and I took my time to really, to try and build myself up, like with playing at that time. I mean, again, I had to not play hip hop, I had to not play funk and breaks. I had to play rhythms that were completely different. And, and as an artist, you gotta learn something new like every single time, otherwise you're not really gonna progress and learn. And that's what really, that, that's what really, got me through this project really. I learned a lot throughout the three weeks. I suppose the only thing I'd like to add is just a sort of thanks to all the performers uh, and also a thanks to the audience because people turned out. You're never sure you have that strange moment when you go, is anyone going to come? Uh, and, and then slowly I remember we heard, as a musician, we were up on the hill. So the performance started in a different plot and the audience walked with people um, and worked with the narrator. And I remember just going, what happens if the narrator comes over and they've only got two people with them? Um, which never happened in all four performances. Oh, it means the world. <laughs> I've never done anything like this before. Um, obviously, this is my first site-specific, grand, large-scale project. Um, and, you know, Grenada is, is, like I say, my origin. So my parents have now moved back to the Caribbean, but myself and my brother are still here in England. So I kind of wanted to embrace my, my roots, but also I kind of want to celebrate that it is possible. It is possible to kind of tell these stories from a British perspective as well. You can celebrate all of three, these three countries together.